Thank you very much, uh, Carmen. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends, uh, respected delegates uh, from national and regional unions from almost all corners of the world. It's my privilege to warmly welcome you to this uh, student summit, to this webinar co-hosted by the Global Student Forum and the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. On behalf of the organizers, I want to thank all of you for being here today and also want to thank the UNESCO Futures of Education team uh, for the quick uh, collaboration leading up to this webinar. The format, as you know, is called Co-Construction Futures of Education Together, and uh, the title already gives a relatively straightforward outlook on what we want to do and what we want to achieve uh, throughout the next uh, one and a half hours uh, together with you. The UNESCO report, um, Reimagining Our Futures Together, uh, a new social contract for education, draws a soberly realistic picture of our world and the multidimensional crises we are facing, from uh, breathtaking inequalities to uh, global warming, climate change spinning out of control, while democracies are being destroyed and undermined by disinformation and fake news, extremist forces, autocrats and, and demagogues in um, every corner of the world at this point. A world in which human rights and the right to education is under attack and under constant threat of being more and more turned into a sole commodity accessible only to those uh, who, who are able to afford it. I think it's sadly evident that if we keep on pushing forward in the same direction, that our future will look even darker than the present looks for the vulnerable and marginalized in our society today. But if we can agree that education represents one of the most effective tools to transform societies, and if we are sincere in our commitment to achieve transformation, the starting point is to rethink how we organize education, how we teach and learn, and probably even more important about what we teach and learn, which values we want to convey, and what knowledge is needed to achieve social, economic, environmental justice uh, in the future looking forward. Students and their democratic unions, um, are key stakeholders in this exercise and need to be involved in all decision-making processes shaping educational realities at the institutional, national, regional, and global level. And that's why it's wonderful that we have managed to, to gather here uh, in, a, in, in, in a growing number <laughs> for this conversation. I'm sure there will be even more people um, joining throughout the next few minutes to come together for this dialogue. And uh, our dialogue today circles around these three core questions that we've been um, streamlining throughout the communication leading up to the summit. So A, what current practices in education do work well and should be continued? B, what do we need to abandon? What do we need to unlearn? And the third question, what do we need to creatively reimagine afresh? So what needs to be done in a, in a, in a, in a new way? There will be plenty of time uh, for in-depth discussions when we split into the breakout sessions uh, and your contributions will be synthesized, analyzed, and uh, used to inform the Transforming Education Summit, uh, which is being planned by the United Nations Secretary General for September 2022 in New York, a summit that we hope will acknowledge the added value of students' participation in shaping quality education and policy and work with student unions in an advisory capacity. After the breakout sessions, we will reconvene here in the plenary and have uh, designated rapporteurs reflect on the findings of each group prior to concluding with an outlook on how to keep this important process moving forward and alive within the students' movement, having a look at the actions you can take uh, with uh, your members and with the students in your constituencies. Now, before handing it over to our dear colleagues from UNESCO who will be giving a presentation on the report, um, we'd like to ask you to join us on Mentimeter um, so we can <laughs> all get a bit of feeling from where we are starting this conversation, though, the base where we are standing. Um, for those of you who do not know Mentimeter, uh, it's an interactive tool where you can anonymously submit responses to questions. And uh, I understand that my colleagues are sending the link to the Mentimeter in the chat right now. I'm going to pull up the presentation um, and I'm going to explain you how it works. Um, so if uh, colleagues can send the link to the Mentimeter presentation into the chat, I see Carmen just did that. So you just need to click on the link that now was submitted in the chat. Thank you very much, Carmen. And um, that's it. It's, it's very, very, very simple. Um, we already have answers. So you follow the link and uh, you can submit your answers to the questions you see up here on the presentation. The first question, is has your organization and your union been involved in 
any consultations? Oh, that's actually the first question. <laughs> Before receiving uh, the invitation to this webinar, are you familiar with the Futures of Education initiative? So let's start with that. Have you heard about Futures of Education before? Uh, any kind of encounter um, throughout the work of your student union, throughout the work uh, with your national and your national commissions? Um, we see yes, yes, no, quite a good balance here. Um, don't be shy to submit your answers. Um, it's, as you see, anonymous. Um, well, we see that a lot of people have heard of it before, but also quite a substantial amount here has not heard of it, which is very good that we have this session because we believe it's an extremely important project um, that really has the case for the development of education. If someone could mute that colleague, um, I'm going to move to the next uh, question here. Um, has your organization union been involved in the consultations? Uh, if one of my colleagues can share of the muting of the colleagues that meet at the moment. Wonderful. In the meanwhile, you can respond to the questions here. So there is a lot of maybe I don't know. No, and actually yeses too. So that speaks for the involvement of national and regional unions here. Um, if someone can try to mute Chitubem, I tried it too, but it's um, he is he is, <laughs> he is resistant to being muted. Um, great. All right. So um, moving on to the next question. And let's be honest, uh, because I think it's important uh, for, for this session. Um, have you managed to read the report of the executive summary? Uh, I flew through it, not bad. How about the rest? Did you, <laughs> did you manage to have a look at it? Um, it's a, it's a, I, I would very much advise you to, to, to read it through. It's a very short document um, and, and really worth the time to invest uh, in reading it. All right, we have three, four, four people that read the whole report. That is uh, impressive. Um, no one who read the executive. Okay, one. <laughs> there we go. Wow, I'm really impressed by the numbers who have, who who read the whole report because that's that's not such a short document. Um, but uh, fully encourage that to other colleagues that also took the time to do it, and it's uh, it's time very well invested. All right, so we we have a bit of a of a of a different starting base from person to person, um, but that should not hinder any good discussions that we're going to have in the breakout sessions. Now, two more questions with the Mentimeter, and then we're going to give it over to uh, colleagues from UNESCO. Next question is: What comes to your mind when you think about the future of education? Um, I'm going to give uh, one minute here to for, for for colleagues to to submit their their answers. So you can really just put any kind of word. I'm going to set the timer. One minute, and we're going to have a wonderful work cloud. Students agency, interdisciplinarity, digitalization, definitely a big topic. Activism, mental health, especially post-pandemic and throughout the pandemic, an issue that gained more prominence. Responsiveness, democratization of institutions, um, the student voice, I think definitely one of one of our core topics, um, how, how we how we democratize schools and universities to give a voice to all groups, research, growth, publicly financed education, a very, very big topic, definitely. More resources, better access, so inclusiveness. Um, lots of important buzzwords we have here already. Um, student participation, investments. Very good. We're going to keep this one um, and, and add it to our, our conference note. And one last question, a bit more tricky maybe. Um, what do you think, what comes to your mind when you hear a new social contract, a general social contract, and what could a new social contract entail? Um, going to set the timer again, so we have a ending to this. Tax the rich. 
<laughs> very good so progressive taxation partnerships social education student participation once again um, autonomy policy socialism democratic governments very important topic for sure objective engagement Tolerance, promises, dialogue, dialogue, intergenerational dialogue, dialogue between institutions and civil society. Peace. Elimination of barriers. <clears throat> what else do we have? Equity, definitely an important aspect. <clears throat> student let students as change leaders very much looking forward to the discussions we're going to have in the in the breakout rooms i think this is already very very promising um i'm going to stop screen sharing thank you so much for your engagement and for taking part in this activity um without further ado um, I, I, I want to I want to give it over to uh, Dr. Sobi Davil, who is the director of the Future of Learning Innovation uh, at UNESCO, and um, I, I, I think so it will give us a, a more detailed view on the report. And uh, over to you, Sobi. Thanks a lot, uh, Sebastian. Um, a pleasure seeing you and being with 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 you and members of the um, Global Student Forum. Um, you gave actually uh, an excellent um, uh, succinct summary. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be coming back on on some of those points. But um, just to say, just before starting, I mean, it 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 would appear obvious um, to you as student unions and associations. But any discussion of the future and of transformation and of education in particular. Uh, we're critically going to have uh, perspectives of, of students um, and the student voice. And it's not only about you know talking new for student representation, but of having um, organized um, uh, student voice. Um, it is about you know framing and the perspectives that are needed. I mean, as as as. Among those most at stake in terms of the future, but also those that can drive um, innovation and and change. Um, so, just to thank you also for um, you know having been involved in the in the in the futures of education initiative from the start, and 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 hope that we can continue together and, and support you from our UNESCO side and and. In, in bringing in um, your ideas um, and 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 your energies. Um, on uh, as I said, Sebastian, you did an excellent job on. Yeah, I mean, you you gave a very <laughs> succinct but full overview. Um, you 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 touched on all the all the main points. But um, we've got the presentation, I think, up on screen, right? Um, so maybe we can move through that and 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 just to give a, a bit of a fuller picture. Um, so reimagining our futures together, new con social contract for education, report of the International Commission on the Futures of Education. It was released uh, last uh, November. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about that. But the, the main argument is really uh, that we are um, at a turning point uh, in terms of global development. The world is at a turning point um, and that um, uh, more of the same, going in the same direction. I think you said it as well, um, um, uh, Sebastian. Uh, you know, more, faster, accelerated uh, is 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 actually uh, you know taking us uh, towards a cliff. We're heading straight uh, into a wall, and that we face a choice of continuing on this unsustainable path. Whether that's in terms of the environment, uh, in terms of uh, um, citizenship and social cohesion, or whether it's in terms of our relationship with um, uh, technological innovation and the accelerated pace of that. Um, continuing on an unsustainable path, 
that's the choice or radically change course. And this resonates a little bit with the reports of the Secretary General of the United Nations last September, Our Common Agenda, which has a, a similar um, framing. Uh, third, to say that knowledge, learning, and education are key to the renewal uh, and transformation of any society. However, um, we also know that um, the, the ways that we organize education currently um, are not doing everything they, uh, um, not, not um, allowing the full potential of education to contribute to more peaceful, to more just uh, uh, societies and to a healthy planet. Not education is not the magic bullet for everything, but does have a key role in shaping uh, our societies and, uh, and uh, the way we interact and, and the way we uh, manage um, our, our, our development process. And, and actually some of our problems actually are, um, stem uh, from uh, education and the way we organize and, and how we educate. So the overall argument is really that we need a new social contract for education. Uh, one that can repair past injustices and we'll come to it uh, uh, in, in a minute while transforming the future. Most discussions about the futures of education, the education and the future is about how education needs to adapt because education is a slow moving machine how education needs to adapt uh, to changes around us. Uh, but it, the argument here is that education needs to be able to shape uh, those futures, um, and, but it must also be able to address some of the longstanding issues and exclusions that we have had over time. Um, this, just very quickly, just to say this is in a tradition, it's a visioning document. Uh, so it is high level, uh, you know, ideas and principles. Uh, it is to prompt dialogue. It's a catalyst for dialogue and action. And this is something that UNESCO, it's, it's in a tradition of something UNESCO has done over time at key historical junctures, at key moments of rapid societal transformation. And here you have covers of earlier uh, reports of a, you know, of a similar nature and purpose. Um, and the first one was late 60s, early 70s, a, you know, a key time of turmoil and, and, and change uh, uh, at the time of uh, the, the Cold War and opposing um, ideological uh, positions on, 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 on development, but a firm belief in, you know, in science and in progress. The second one in the middle of learning the treasure within, which came out in the early 90s, and that was just after the end of the Cold War, time of intensification of globalization, of kind of triumph of, of liberal uh, thought in, in development. And, and, and this report, which comes, I would say, with the second decade of the, of the 21st century, um, and um, the, our uh, grappling with the multiple, increasingly interdependent, complex uh, development issues partially reflected in the 2030 Agenda. Um, the report was uh, developed, yes, we can go to the next one, by an international commission, I think just what to say, I mean, international commission on one hand, that was one important strand like it, like these reports often have, uh, but an important thing, uh, two important things here. This commission was headed by a woman from the global south, so the president of uh, Ethiopia, and this was a welcome change to bring in a slightly different perspective in a world where uh, geopolitics is also shifting and, and perspectives on the role of education and approaches to development might be different. Second, um, and unlike previous reports, that there was an open process from the beginning of, of consultation, of um, encouraging um, debates and of inviting contributions on broadly on perspectives on the future and, and the role of education. Uh, and here, very pleased that, that some of you, some of the student unions, had already contributed uh, to this, but uh, uh, around the world through different um, uh, constituencies and stakeholder groups, we, we, we had um, you know, a very broad open process because ultimately this is the purpose of this kind of report. It is to uh, catalyze 
dialogue, debate, and, and innovative action. Um, if we go to the um, next slide, um, the framing. The framing is really, in, in a sense, our present is one foot in the past and one foot in the future. Uh, the, it's, the foot in the past is the unfulfilled promises. The foot in the future, the uncertain futures. What are these unfulfilled promises? In education, if we look back 30 to 50 years, we look back to 1990, we look back to 1970, there's been spectacular expansion of, um, of access to educational opportunities across the world. But we know that there are continued exclusions in particular of learners and their communities from, from uh, economically vulnerable groups, historically marginalized or excluded groups. And we still have an issue of exclusion in access to educational opportunity. We have a major issue with uh, or what some have turned a, a global crisis in the quality of very basic education in the acquisition of fundamental uh, foundational skills. Uh, we have an issue with the relevance of uh, the outcomes of education in terms of development that we mentioned earlier. So unfulfilled promises, the one foot in the past and the second looking to the future um, that we have uh, uh, a, a number of disruptions and transformations underway. Uh, you mentioned some of those, Sebastian, uh, the planet is, uh, and the environment is in danger. There is momentum, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to address that. Um, but we also see that at the political level, not enough is being done. Democratic governance under attacks, uh, a democratic space in regression, uh, a rise in authoritarianism. Um, which has been documented even over the past 30 years um, and, and attack on uh, you know, um, um, citizen uh, participation. In terms of technologies, that there is great potential um, in, the, in the digital transformations in particular, but also in, 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 uh, you know, in the areas of, of, of bioethics. Uh, but um, uh, for education in terms of the digital transformation, that the, the promises and the promise of that tech is not always uh, delivering. And finally, in terms of work, that uncertainties around, you know, what automation uh, will do in shifting uh, um, uh, the world of work. Um, but there's also uh, changes in the way that we understand uh, work uh, and work that matters and that has meaning. That, so that's the framing, the, the unfulfilled promises, the uncertain futures. And with this, an urgent need to rebalance um, our relationships uh, together. So on the social level, the human to human relationship with the planet, how we relate as a human species with the living planet around us. And finally, uh, the human to technology uh, and what some of these recent developments um, uh, mean in terms of what it means to be human and what is unique about being human and, and our contributions. Um, some of the high-level recommendations on the, as of the next slide. Um, High-level, some of the foundational principles as well for the social contract that you mentioned earlier, um, that uh, education is first and foremost a public endeavor. Public endeavor, not only in the sense of public good and delivered by the state, but that it's public education is an education in a public space that promotes public interests, which is accountable to all. It is a collective responsibility. The state has a place, uh, ha has a particular role to play. Uh, uh, it still has an important role to play, obviously in financing, in provision, but perhaps most importantly with the growth of non-state actors at all levels of education, the diversification and the increasing role at all levels of education and in different ways. There's increasingly a role for regulation um, on the part of uh, the state. But education as a collective public endeavor at the service of uh, um, uh, public interest and accountable to all. So obviously um, in terms of you know, growing commercialization of education uh, uh, that needs to be regulated, non-state engagement is welcome. Uh, 
uh, to the extent that basic principles of non-discrimination of equality of opportunity are 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 maintained and, and protected so that's first next um uh, with regard to the environment, uh, we mentioned it uh, briefly. If being educated means living unsustainably, some of the most educated people are those who are contributing the most to climate change. So there's clearly something wrong in our models of education and 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 to what we aspire to as modes of uh, you know of lifestyles and modes of consumption and, and production. Uh, so it is about relearning our independencies. It's about replacing um, um, kind of human uh, uh, agency and 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 role, uh, uh, and and no longer accepting the domination or an, uh, a framing of the domination of the human species on the rest of our natural environment. In terms of um, technology, next um, and the human to technology relationship um, is that we have seen all too often uh, and we have seen with COVID out of necessity to a large extent, a kind of uncritical uh, uh, embrace of technology. Um, and so it is important that education not only deploy, but also be the space uh, uh, to define um, what is meaningful uh, use of technology and 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 how that should be managed and and governed. A lot of the discussions on education and technology uh, uh, very often actually evacuate uh, issues that 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 relate to the governance uh, of the digital commons, uh, which is a term also being used actually um, in the our common agenda that I had mentioned. Finally, the digital technologies, there was a lot at the very beginning of COVID with regard to schools, the digital technologies could, could probably replace uh, teachers and schools who could co go completely virtually. But I think we have discovered at different levels of education, just the importance of the social and physical sites of the school uh, and of educational institutions, um, and that they serve much more than education and that education in itself is much more than academic. Um, study. Uh, just moving on, not to take too long. Finally, coming back to the idea of the social contract, that's the call. Um, and we saw that in the Metri, uh, the, the Metri meter um, exercise, uh, a call for fabric uh, for forging a new social contract for education with a number of foundational principles uh, to look how uh, at how uh, um, learning is organized at different levels that it is about, and we saw it as some of the keywords that came out in the um, in the word cloud that you did in terms of uh, social contract, dialogue, partnerships, democratic participation. It is about actions and actors and redefining the relationships and the, the ways they work together. The, the together in the title of the report is uh, about the need, everyone is involved and implicated by education and must have their say um, and in this sense we need um, a, a more relational and less transactional approach i would say to uh, to the to, to the idea of social contract moving on in terms of how next slide in terms of how learning is organized i won't get into the details but there's a number of dedicated chapters on pedagogy on curriculum on teaching on schools and then on broader educational systems you see here some of the kind of the the, the, the main um, idea that comes through that, but there are detailed discussions um, in the report about needing more more uh, pedagogies of cooperation and solidarity. We need more ecological, intercultural, interdisciplinary curricula. Um, we need more collaborative teaching and a valuing, obviously, of the teaching profession, but really as a collaborative endeavor. And then the, the fundamental uh, role of schools, which needs to be protected, but needs to be transformed as the foundation of a broader educational system that includes other formal education institutions, as well as other social, uh, civic, cultural spaces of, of, of learning. And finally, to end here, these the invitation is to forge a new social contract. The invitation is for all constituencies, including student unions and organizations that you represent, 
to consider three simple questions, uh, and they were announced in the concept notes. We're not starting from scratch, transforming education and, and, and shaping uh, more just and sustainable futures is, is, is not fr starting from scratch. We have a lot to build on. So first question, what is it that is actually uh, uh, positive and, and uh, in our current practices and approaches that we should continue? Perhaps we should we need to protect because they're being undermined um, or they need to be strengthened. But we also know, and that's the second question, what in our current practices and approaches in education need to be abandoned because they're really not um, contributing to shaping the sorts of futures that we want. Um, and they might even unintentionally be going against uh, some of the aims and purposes we, uh, we attribute to education. And finally, uh, what in the, this historical juncture, that this crossroads that we find ourselves at, would we need to uh, uh, imagine or, or reimagine uh, uh, completely? So this is the invitation based on the on 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 for the dialogue and for contributing to the to forging a, a, a social contract together at all levels, each and every one and and group and constituency in their own space and 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 and, um, and uh, space and and. Uh, for action and uh, and and for transformation. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, back over to you. Thank you very much, Sabi, for this for this wonderful presentation. Um, I think uh, it, it is the best starting base um, for our discussions now in the breakout rooms. Um, so it's it's over to you now, colleagues, um, to to answer these very very important questions. Uh, you will have seen that I have opened up the breakout rooms. Uh, there is one thing to keep in mind, or actually multiple things to keep in mind. Uh, the first thing to keep in mind is um, we need need one rapporteur for each breakout room. So once you have assembled yourself in the breakout rooms, uh, please choose who will be the person that reports back from your specific room after. The session has been uh, concluded. On the other hand, you will see that uh, there are four breakout rooms. Uh, one has SPPT um, in front of it. So that will be uh, the room where we will have our colleagues from uh, Spain and from Brazil. So we will have been, uh, we will be able to cater for, for Spanish and Portuguese uh, facilitation there. So if you are Spanish or Portuguese, um, since the translation does not work in the breakout rooms, please assign yourself to breakout room four. For the rest, um, it does not matter at all um, which breakout room you assign yourself in. Let's make sure that it's balanced. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trusting in the in the herd intelligence here that we'll manage to get a balance. Otherwise, I will reshuffle uh, people so we have uh, a good balance. You can now assign yourself to the breakout rooms um, and uh, we'll make sure that the one GSF facilitator is in each breakout room as agreed. Um, so nothing to add from my end. Good luck for the discussions um, and please assign yourself. I'm going to stop the recording here and we're going to pick it up again when we come into the plenary. Very good, here we go. Um, so uh, welcome back to the plenary. Um, we are going to now together have a look at the findings at the conclusions um, of your respective groups. Um, I don't know if you prefer that we screen share the gem board or whether we're going to have a discussion um, just by the rapporteurs. I don't know what you're feeling. Should we screen share the the, 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 the gem board? Yes. Okay. I think it would be very interesting. Yes. Very good. Um, perfect. In the meanwhile, while I start to share the gem board, who is the uh, rapporteur from breakout room number one? I see there are a lot of sticky notes on this one, so. Um, Please, Emily. That would be me, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to remember which room I was in. <laughs> Perfect, you should see now the screen and Emily, uh, over to you for a five minute uh, conclusion of what you've been working on. Thank you. Um, on the first question, um, we discussed about hybrid learning and digital learning is um, embracing a lot of the possibilities that have happened from the pandemic and continuing them afterwards because they're really beneficial for, for example, um, people that 
can't afford to move to study for various reasons. It's really inclusive for uh, mature students, for disabled students, for students with different, um, for example, caring responsibilities, whether it be children or others. It's also much more inclusive for people who learn at different paces and to be able to follow it when it's best for them because if it's recorded they can watch it later etc and carrying on uh, flexible ways of learning there. Um, another thing we discussed was free education. Um, I'm fortunate that I'm, I live in Norway where we have free education for all and this is something that we want to hold on to here and that um, it has been threatened a few times especially for international students but in ensuring that this stays free and that we can help spread this uh, across the world. And then on B, um, we discussed about the reduction in the public funding of education. And we also spoke about traditional lectures and their traditional forms of education. For example, a traditional lecture where we should leave that behind where like a lecturer is standing in front of an auditorium and the information is just going one way and they're preaching and it's not necessary going in to the students. We need to move to more interactive ways of learning and learner centered education. Like I just mentioned in, on the previous um, about hybrid and different ways of, of learning. Uh, we also talked about uh, the commodification um, of education. And then on C, we've got a lot of post-it notes, but we, we ran out of um, time. We didn't speak much about that, but it was um, one of the things we discussed was proper representation at all levels from school students all the way up to postgraduate students that they should be included and properly represented. And then we carried on speaking about student-centered learning and the importance of that and really having the student in focus. And for example, using varied assessment tools and looking at different ways of assessing. Um, and yeah, I'll, you can see a lot of the post-it notes there. Um, and one of the thing, one of the post-it notes that I didn't get to bring up that I brought up is in Norway we have laws uh, concerning our learning environment, and I understand that that's not necessarily the case elsewhere in the world. And so, again, helping to ensure that students around the world have a safe learning environment. So I think that that's try, trying to touch upon different things that we uh, spoke about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily, and thank you so much, Breakout Room 1, for all of this. Um, we're going to move forward to Breakout Room 2, and I invite whoever is the moderator of Breakout Room 2 to go ahead. Yes. Yes, I'll try in English, but it's not my language. <laughs> But um, we have not so much discussions, but we try to make this exercise with this dispositive, the document. And um, so I will, I, I'll try to, 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 to present some things. Uh, for the first question. <laughs> Okay, for the first questions, um, uh, one one idea is to the, to continue with uh, the the so much on different project uh, inter interdisciplinary project that are arising that to continue in this direction uh, to to creating bridge between the disciplinary discipline, and then one other point is uh, the. Um, this new format hybrid education that it's come with the pandemic situation to continue to 
to combining hybrid education and also to to continue to the face to face education the two together in the same module if i understand well and then yes i i need uh, some help also language help to read this because we don't discuss so much and the and if I have a little help to interpret uh, all the stuff, it's good. What is what is your original language, Lucrezia? <laughs> Italian. Italian. And I can speak French. <laughs> well, we, I mean, uh, we what, what do you think? So, yeah. But the problem, um, le problème, c'est pas c'est pas seulement la langue. Je pense mm -hmm. qu'on n'a pas beaucoup discuté. Donc moi, je dois interpréter des choses mm. qui ont été écrites par quelqu'un d'autre. Okay. Is there anyone in your, in your group? Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un d'autre dans ton groupe qui pourrait... Je ne pense pas, mais on peut demander encore une fois. Et the people that have thought uh, some post-it in my group uh, can maybe explain better than me what they have uh, right, written. Colleagues from breakout room two, anything you want to want to add? Any, any, any colleagues that want to step in and... and uh... Um, Roisin just says she can speak Italian, so I suppose Roisin could translate <laughs> Italian <laughs> if we're on the on the English channel. But anyone who wants to add from the colleagues from Breakout Room Two to what Lucrezia has been uh, presenting for for the first question, because for the second I can continue. But the first question, well, I think that we can move on to the second. That's yes. fine. Okay. Yeah, yes. that's okay. Yeah. I think uh, uh, about the second. I think um, I wrote. Uh, I thought. I think we have to to go away of this idea of competition that is always in the education world. It's this uh, no what uh, the con uh, the education will not be concepted like a competitive world, but uh, more collaborative. And this also this idea of hierarchy and and uh, of uh, not all people can do the same um, can can follow the same path with not the same um, possibility and this has to change. It's not logical for me. And also that uh, the education is based on, on based on this same idea. Uh, of uh, growth and economy and uh, yes and then also i wrote we don't have to to always see technology as this solution also in education it can be used but it's not the solution of all and then Yes, the, there is some other interesting interesting post-it who want to say something of our group, please. In the... uh, okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, sorry, I, I had the network challenges, so I was very skeptical about volunteering. Um, I was in a group uh, break, uh, breakout uh, group two. Uh, we didn't really have much discussions, but I'll just take it up from where she stopped. Uh, okay, one of the uh, uh, suggestions of one of our group members is uh, one of the things we need to abandon or learn is uh, seeing technology as a solution to everything. Um, like she said earlier, it can be used as a means, uh, a tool, but it shouldn't be um, given, uh, uh, it shouldn't be seen as uh, the solution to everything. Uh, using education as a means of expectation is, uh, is a practice that is ongoing in some regions and uh, it should be abandoned. Um, downplaying the importance of informal channels of uh, practical uh, education. Uh, there are other ways, there are other means uh, of which uh, uh, ed education can be carried out. 
uh, if we are focusing on uh, imagining a future for uh, of education, I think we should ex uh, explore the options that uh, that are, are available. And also conceptual based learning uh, instead of uh, practice practical based learning it's is one other thing that we should unlearn um finally uh, uh things we need to uh, reimagine uh, uh we need to creatively reimagine afresh uh overcoming hierarchies uh interactive learning format of uh, we need to focus on the goal rather than the method used for teaching. Uh, also, using more of technology to provide quality education uh, that uh, it's, it's should also be reimagined. Uh, there are so many opportunities in, in technology that could provide education, especially for, for persons in remote areas that don't have access to education. Um, building links and connections, and finally instructional strategies and the cooperative learning strategies should also be explored. Um, uh, I think this will bring it to a close for my breakout session, group two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chidovem and Lucrezia for, for, for your um, conclusions from the breakout room two. Um, in the interest of time, let's, let's keep it a bit more brief for breakout room three. Um, and I understand that breakout room three will be the, the colleagues that worked in Spanish. So um, who is going to present from your end, please? It's gonna be me because uh, our <laughs> Spanish speakers colleagues were a bit shy. Um, so from the practices that work and that we should uh, keep, um, we have a student participation uh, and like uh, debate space and this kind of space that provide peer learning um, processes uh, and opportunities. We also have support systems for students um, as something that, that works, but that we also should improve. Uh, and then um, support financial support for students. Uh, so more and better um, finance for education and more allocation of grants uh, for, for students, for those especially ones who cannot access uh, due to financial barriers. Um, in the part of um, what we should leave behind, uh, this is uh, personally for me very interesting. We had a discussion between um, people from Spain and from Latin America and uh, the colleague from Latin America explained uh, that we should leave behind the hate speech that are still very present in our in our education institutions such as uh, mis misogynistic uh, approaches or uh, male chauvinistic and homophobia and the colleague from from spain explained that one thing that we should change within uh, curricula it is uh, to to address sometimes this kind of hate speech is how history is teach because for example in spain uh, history is is um, showcased from a very colon colonial perspective, uh, and the um, yeah colonial past of the country is is teach in a way that it should be praised and celebrated, which is of course something um, not nice. Um, and at the very end, on what we should change, um, we should change uh, well improve. We should improve. Uh, listen more to students um, and and promoting more student participation. We should also uh, change the um, uh, lifelong learning experience of the teachers and, and professors, uh, because we think that teachers and, and professors should be up to date of the things that, that they teach and the fact that they uh, gain their, their position um, for 30 years doesn't mean that they don't have to study anymore. Um, and Finally, we also need to change the relation between uh, students and professors to make the, the learning experience more accessible um, for, Para for que la experiencia del aprendizaje. On pink, uh, we have something that I think. Uh, 
proposed. Uh, il y avait certaines choses qui étaient... Questions, but it's about the mental health of both uh, students and professors, which is something very important. Uh, and one thing that we should do is to avoid stressful um, practices for both students uh, and teachers, especially um, after the, the pandemic. Uh, and on the other hand, we should also improve the accessibility um, of the different um, spaces where we where we learn, such as schools and, and universities, because many times the students with a uh, um, lack of uh, mobility or, or any other like physical or, or mental barriers have to face even more uh, complications when they access education. So that's from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen, um, for the comprehensive summary. Um, we're going to move to the last breakout room. Uh, somehow we were not um, as uh, proficient with choosing nice colors, everything in yellow, uh, but I give the floor to Jacob for his uh, summary. Yes, thank you. Um, so um, we, uh, we talked about as fundamentally, you need to have publicly funded education and you need to have systems that are, that are strong and that are for everyone. So what works? Publicly funded. Um, I think that was like a very like foundational thing. Um, and we also, I can see it's so tiny on my screen, um, involvement of uh, teachers and students in decision-making processes that shape the educational reality. And those experiences of having those that are taking part in the education, making the decisions about it. So it's not something that happens far away, but it's something that happens in the classroom. Um, what do we need to abandon uh, and or unlearn? Uh, we should abandon the idea that one size fits all. Uh, we need to be specific and adapt to the circumstances that we are in. We must abandon the idea that learners are just passive. You don't just you don't just receive education, you take part in education. Um, and, and the idea that education is only for young people, it's for everyone. You learn uh, all, all your life. And, um, and then we have education as only a means to other things, because we had a conversation about that education has a value in of itself, and that is often forgotten. Um, so um, it's good that we can talk about the labor market or jobs or, or how it contributes to other things. And that's nice. But we also need to think about that it has a value in of itself and recognize that. Um, uh, and the idea that education comes cheaply. It costs money and we need to invest in it. It's not, it's a, a really basic point, but uh, a lot of times you think, uh, it, it seems like people think, oh, we can just like, let's get some education and then like uh, put some money into it. But you need to invest like fundamentally to make it work, to build strong systems. Um, and um, then we had a, a conversation about the importance of balance, balancing the local with the more wider dimensions, uh, because a lot of decision making in education policy is made on a national level and today even sometimes at an international level. So we need to, to like find a way to keep the, the local while going global, um, because both things are important, so balance between those two. Um, and education needs to be part of the local community. It needs to be connected to the space that it exists in. Um, we talked about uh, non-traditional experts, indigenous knowledge. We talked about young people as leaders of change. And yeah, that's a, a bit about what we talked about. Thank you. Let me find the Zoom window. So, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, uh, for your for your work in the in the breakout rooms. Um, I, I think we really have a good base uh, to work from, and, and and that will be used to to synthesize um, the outcomes and, and the takeaways from this from this from this uh, event that we were having here today. Um,
I think that brings us almost to the closing, um, and I'm going to give it uh, over to Charlene uh, for the closing remarks from UNESCO then. Thanks a lot, Sebastian. I'll try to keep it short because uh, we are uh, a little bit short on time. So, well, first of all, thank you very much. I mean, very warm thanks, first of all, for the organization. It's been a very easy and smooth collaboration with you, GSF, uh, from the start. And also thanks to all the participants today um, who were able to reflect on these three framing questions. And thanks to the very brave uh, rapporteur. <laughs> You've done a, an excellent job um, in wrapping up you know, all the inputs from, from the group. From what I heard, I was able to rotate uh, in the five different rooms. I've heard very interesting things. Uh, and um, it, it's really great to hear that your ideas uh, actually uh, reflect a lot of the of the ideas in the Futures of Education report. Uh, I've heard things about public education, strengthening free education through grants. I've heard things about abandoning the culture of competition um, that is nurtured by, by a culture of growth-led economy. I've heard about reimagining um, pedagogy with a more active learning, stop thinking that education is about sitting in a room and listening passively to a teacher uh, I've seen student-centered education, and then I heard um, things about inclusion. Uh, who is the expert trying to, to be, to have a more open view of who an expert can be and value a little bit more the more uh, non-traditional uh, non and indig indigenous type of knowledge. Um, something I, I heard that is very, um, uh, very, I think, um, appealing, I would say, is the definition of, of success. What is it to be successful in education? So all these reflections are really interesting. And that brings me to the conclusion of the Transforming Education Summit, which is here at UNESCO, our and at the UN level, our next big, uh, big event to come. So we will make sure that all your inputs fit into the Transforming Education Summit. Uh, which was convened by the, uh, as you know, the UN Secretary General for September, uh, third, week of, third week of September in New York. And we're going to have, as you know, a pre-summit in, in Paris end of June with a pre-pre-summit on the 28th of June. Uh, and the theme of that pre-pre-summit is youth-led. So this connects very much to what you were saying in the introduction through the Mentimeter animation. Um, I've seen in the Mentimeter animation a lot of student-led uh, change, students as agents of change. So uh, we would very much like to strengthen our collaboration with uh, GSF. And I think that we're looking forward to, you know, uh, in the coming months, see how, you know, the G GSF can um, participate in this uh, pre-summit -pre on the 28th. Um, so that's it on my side. Again, thank you very much to all of you for your time participation. And uh, I hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much, Celine. Um, also from our end, uh, a massive thank you to all of you who have joined uh, for taking the time for your inputs. A big, big thank you also to the UNESCO Futures of Education team, uh, to Celine and, and Sobi. And we, we really hope to, to continue this collaboration and, and strengthen the engagement of student unions within the processes of UNESCO. A massive thank you goes also out to our interpreters uh, who have been supporting us in making this possible. Um, and we hope that we meet again soon for similar events. And uh, I think there is nothing left to say besides thank you, merci, gracias. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.